Hey, today I'm gonna to give you four photo tips that are gonna help separate you from the rest of the pack. Ask David Bergman. Hey, we're back here at Ask David Bergman. Of course, I'm David Bergman, answering the photo questions that you ask me on my site, askdavidbergman.com. I pick the best ones and answer them right here on Adorama TV. Today, I've got one from Anthony M. and he asks, how do you keep yourself motivated and find new ways to shoot a show that you've seen over and over again on tour? That's a great question. So yes, I'm on tour this year, all year long, and into next year with Luke Combs, photographing his show day in and day out. It's an awesome show, it's super fun to shoot, but yes, there is a challenge there when you photograph something that is kind of similar every night. Of course, the show has variances and things that change from night to night, but visually, it looks kind of the same. I spent the last 10 years on the road with Bon Jovi, and their show, whether it's an arena show or a stadium show, is still a lot of similarities from night to night. So how do I stay motivated and challenge myself? Well, over the years, I found a few things that I'm gonna tell you that I like to apply to all my photography, not just my tour photography, but anything I do, I like to separate myself from the pack. That's really my goal. Because if you wanna make a living in this business, you can't shoot the same thing that everybody else, else does. You might look at pictures that people shoot and you say, I could shoot that picture. Yeah, that's great, maybe you could, but you didn't. That person did, and they're doing something that's just a little bit different that got them the job. So I'm gonna go through my top four things that you can do to separate yourself from the pack. The first one is stay away from the other photographers, right? So like I said, you might be in an event. I shot sports for many years for Sports Illustrated and for other clients. And if I'm at a sidelines of a football game, there might be 50 or 100 or hundreds of photographers there shooting the same game that I am using the same lenses, right? So how do I separate myself? Well, I used to jokingly say, if I see a gaggle of photographers together, I run the other direction because I don't wanna be in the same physical place as all of them. Why would a client hire me to shoot the exact same photograph that somebody else is making? They can just pick up the picture from them and probably pay less money for it because they're already there. So a lot of times what I did over the years is I might go up and shoot a really high angle, a different perspective, something unique that not everybody else is doing. This picture, for example, was at the uh, Penn State Notre Dame game quite a number of years ago, and it was the first time they had ever done this White House at the stadium where they asked everybody to wear white. Usually it's just the student section. And I was on the field and I heard this announcement and I kind of saw it, and I went all the way up to the very top of the stadium to make that picture. Once I was up there, it's not really a hard picture to make. There's nothing special about it. It's just a wide angle lens. I waited for a little bit of color in the sky with the sun setting, but that was really about it. But the thing is, how many other photographers made that picture? Zero. I was the only one to go up there and do that on that day. So I get more emails about this picture than probably any other picture I've ever made. It's not a challenging photograph to make, but I was the only one that did it. Penn State fans must be crazy because I really do get a lot of emails about that photograph. All right, that's the first one. Stay away from the other photographers. Number two, use technology to your advantage. Yes, there was a time when just having a better camera would help you make better pictures because not everybody had access to that gear. Today, honestly, that, that entry barrier is gone and everybody's using pretty much the same gear. So you've got to find other unique ways. For example, remote cameras. I used to use remote cameras at sporting events and then I took that technology and brought it into my concert work. And I'm able to set up cameras and trigger them remotely from unique positions. I can put one on the stage that I can shoot right by the drum kit and I can shoot anytime I want throughout the show no matter where I am in the crowd. Sometimes on Luke's uh, show, I'll put one in the lighting truss overhead the stage, looking straight down. It's a really unique angle that not nobody else can make that picture but me because I'm his tour photographer. So I, because I have that level of access, I've taken that technology and applied it. Many years ago at President Obama's first inauguration, I made a photograph that went viral. It was uh, this gigapan, this gigapixel image that's super high resolution, made up of hundreds of still frames stitched together and you can zoom in and you can pretty much see every face in the crowd of two million people. That was really about me thinking ahead of time, I'm gonna be going to this event, there's 500 of the world's best photographers there, how can I do something different? Why would they pay me to be there if they can just grab a picture from somebody else? So I brought that gigapan with me, I researched everything I could, and I made that picture, and it was a really unique image that wound up you know, earning me a lot of money because I wound up using that technology at other events. A lot of other clients hired me to use that technology over the years. So using technology to separate myself, that's number two. Number three, it never hurts to ask and don't take no for an answer. This is somewhat of your psychology skills, right? And you need to 
uh, work with people and come up with ideas and then convince people to do it, right? So for example, if you have a, a young band and you want to tie them to a tree, you just ask, hey, you mind if I gaffer tape you to a tree? You never know, they might say yes. If they say no, talk to them about it. Use your persuasion skills, obviously in a nice way. You can't be a jerk about it, but use your persuasive ability to get people to do what you want. Convince them that it's a good idea and it's good for them and it's good for you and you can have a lot of fun doing it and you really can get people to do things that you might not have expected. Uh, many years ago when I worked at the Miami Herald, uh, Ricky Martin was doing an event where he was going to be up on a um, balcony overlooking a crowd and the official photo area was down on the ground, but I didn't want to be there with all the other photographers. So I spent a couple of hours up there talking to people, making friends with security and the publicists and talking about the picture I wanted to make and I had a chair there ready that I could stand on and, and I just, I had it all prepared and, and I got everybody on my side and we were all in it together and we were going to make this great picture. And then when the time came where he was about to show up, they kicked everybody else off of that balcony. They made them go down except for me. I was the only one, only still photographer that was allowed to stay up there and make that picture. Now look, it doesn't always work. Of course, um, you have to know when to quit and when to give up. but. Try not to take no for an answer. Use your persuasive abilities to convince people to do things that is really in their best interest as well as your own. And then the last one, number four, really is just give them more than they expect, right? You really wanna go above and beyond because there are so many photographers today. Everybody's a photographer. You're competing against millions of people now with their photography and photography has generally gotten very, uh, you know, much less expensive for clients to hire. So again, why should they hire you? Well, if you just do what you're told to do and that's it, you're not going to be memorable. Nobody's going to you know, remember you next time they're looking to hire somebody. I'll give you an example. Drew Carey, the comedian, host of Price is Right. He's a friend. I've worked with him a number of times over the years. And back before he got the Price is Right gig, he was doing this uh, tour, this comedy tour, the Improv All-Stars Tour, with a bunch of his uh, improv friends from Whose Line Is It Anyway and the Drew Carey Show. And he brought me on the tour to document it. And he told me straight up, he said, I want you here because I don't need pictures of myself. I want you to photograph all the other comedians um, on stage so they have pictures for their own websites and all that. So uh, that was really why I was hired and what he was paying me to do. But I go above and beyond whenever I can. So I would do as much behind, you know, as many behind the scenes photos. I would follow Drew backstage and get him in his dressing room and, and I would just make those pictures not knowing if anybody would ever see them or if he wanted them or it didn't really matter. And then, I always have lighting with me and I asked him one day, we were in Las Vegas, and I said, hey, you know, we should do a, a portrait of the whole cast at a craps table, for example. And he was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So the next day, we, I set it all up. We had security at the, at the, um, in the casino and they cordoned off an area for us and I lit it all up and I made a portrait of the whole cast together. And that's not a picture he hired me to do. Nobody was paying me to do that, but I went above and beyond and did that. They loved it. They wound up using it again the following year uh, to promote the tour. And it just was memorable. It's one of my favorite photographs still. So, um, you know, I'm usually the first one in, the last one out whenever I can be. I try to really go above and beyond to give my clients more than they expect. So, Anthony, you know, you were asking specifically about concert tours. Um, yes, I, what I'd like to do each night is I'm going to deliver 50, 60, 70 photographs each night to management and the band and, and my client, but which is the band, of course. But in my mind, if I make one unique photograph that I'm happy with every night, then I'm happy. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm challenging myself each night to make one different unique photograph. Of course, there's going to be a lot of pictures and many of them are going to be similar night to night. That's just the nature of the beast. We're in a different city, but it's a similar looking show. So, um, but I want to challenge myself to do that each night. And I want you guys to challenge yourselves as well. Tell me down in the comments below what you think. Remember, the four things are stay away from the other photographers, use technology to your advantage, it never hurts to ask, don't take no for an answer, and give them more than they expect. If you follow those four things, I think you're going to be on your way to actually making a living and making some money as a professional photographer. Hey, thanks very much for that question. Listen, I talk about a lot of this stuff in my own photo workshops on Luke's tour. I'm doing a, it's called Shoot from the Pit, and you come out during the day, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about photographing concerts and really action of any kind, and then you get to shoot the show that night. So I'm going to have a whole batch of them in 2020 I'm going to announce soon. So make sure you go to shootfromthepit.com, sign up for the email list there. And of course, while you're uh, sitting in front of your computer, Adorama TV, those guys have been amazing in, uh, 
you know, have, with this all kinds of free photo content to help you guys out. Uh, my show and a bunch of other shows from great people. So make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications, all of that YouTube stuff, you know how that works. So, and lastly, if I'm not done uh, self-promoting here, go to AskDavidBergman.com, submit your own photo questions. I'll pick the best ones and answer them right here on a future show. Thanks very much for joining me. Come back next week, we'll have a new question. I'll see you then.